I am going to uh, address then uh, the question of housing, housing affordability, lack of housing affordability, and really draw that into a bigger issue of inequality, uh, which is the sign of the times. So I'm the housing part of housing, home, and belonging, which are the themes uh, we're thinking about in our local presentations. Some of you will have seen, uh, or heard at least, uh, of this uh, project uh, that was done uh, earlier this year by Angus Reid, a survey. 55% of people say that housing, prices, affordability is the most important issue uh, in this region. Now I want to draw in the inequality side of that. This is another figure taken from the Angus Reid survey. He very helpfully divides the population into four groups in terms of housing. Those who are happy, those who are comfortable, those who are uncomfortable, and those who are miserable. I would have to say that I'm a very fortunate man and I'm in the happy crowd. And that's because as I look at all of the indicators there, I have ticks for myself against them. I see I'm in the very lucky age cohort of being more than 55 years old, just. Um, I own my own home. I've owned it a long time. And well, some of the time, there's just my wife and I there uh, right now. There's uh, an extended family, uh, but now and again, we have it to ourselves. But look at the miserable folk in the bottom right there. Some own, some rent. Most of them do indeed have children at home, three plus children. They have a mortgage, they have a significant commute, and they are quite miserable with the burden of their housing situation. Look at their age groups. Not many of my cohort there, but a great deal for those of my children and their friends. So inequality, generational inequality, uh, is one of the things we see uh, as we look at the housing market. Now for those who are uncomfortable or miserable, affordability. Uh, is one of the key factors that is affecting them. Some of you will have heard of this uh, study that's done every year by a group in the US called Demographia. They've created an index of affordability. And this particular figure uh, looks at Canadian cities, six of them. The key thing to note there is that cities with a serious unaffordability problem have an index score of five or more. Well, there was a period uh, of three months or so when Vancouver was around that level, but it's way above it today and has been rising steadily. If we look internationally uh, rather than just nationally, uh, Demographia's survey covers nine different countries and the top two most unaffordable cities are very consistent year after year. Hong Kong is the most unaffordable and Vancouver is the second most unaffordable. So here is the basis, I think, of the miserable or uncomfortable response of many. Now, what are some of the consequences of this housing misfortune. Well, one is that people leave. They just give up and move away. And Angus Reid asked the question of, are you seriously thinking of leaving Metro Vancouver because of the cost of owning a home here? You can see for yourself the way that people lined up in their responses. 54% of the uncomfortable said, yes, we are seriously considering leaving. 85% of the miserable. Now, that's almost half the population in those two categories. And the majority of them are really giving up on this region or seriously considering uh, doing so. So leaving town uh, is one 
response, and I'm just going to identify one other uh, because of the shortage of time, and that is having a very, very heavy debt load. And this map looks at the debt load which is carried by people in this region. The Bank of Canada is worried because as a nation we have a debt load of about 160% of disposable income. Wow, if you're that low in Vancouver, that is really impressive. Uh, if you could see this map in any detail, you'd see that most people, almost all people, are over 200%. Some are over 300%. Major, major issues with debt load. So why? Why is there this huge issue of unaffordability? Well, economists usually say that a, a property market is a response to local circumstances. But if we look at local incomes in Vancouver, well, we're not really hitting the high spots. Uh, here from the 2011 uh, census uh, is individual incomes for adults with bachelor's degrees. And as you can see, Vancouver comes in number 10 of the 10 largest Canadian cities. We do not have substantial incomes here. Globalization is what lies behind the high price of housing in this region. Global capital flows, investment, people identifying Vancouver as, and Vancouver's property as an asset which is worth a capitalizing in. Global labor flows, the wealth migration that has occurred for 35 years here now uh, as a result of the uh, government's business immigration program, 200,000 people moved to Vancouver who are millionaires. Uh, inevitably, uh, this uh, is going to have a major impact uh, on the local housing market. Uh, and finally, uh, deregulation since the 1990s, the throwing over open, really, of housing uh, totally uh, to the private sector, an open land market with a minimal role adopted by senior governments in supplying affordable housing. The inequality, then, that I've imperfectly drawn out today uh, is in the housing market is, is part of a much larger inequality uh, that we see in growing increasingly in society. And I'm going to leave you with these two quotes, one from Pope Francis, the other from Barack Obama, uh, who are making their own points about inequality. And I think they're raising the issue that inequality is an ethical question and, I would argue, also a religious question as well. Thank you.